Hello and welcome back to Family Tech, where you get to be the tech expert of your home. And speaking of experts, we've got the ultimate social media, Instagram, all of the things expert. And that is Anna McFarland. Oh, it's me. Hi. It's you. <laughs> Anna, tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is you do and how amazing you are. Oh, gosh. Should I start from how amazing I am? Well, how obviously. Amazing I am? Yeah. Uh, so I have loved marketing since I got into it about 23, 20. I never know. I always say like over 20 years ago, I've lost yeah. track, yeah. but it's just so fun to connect with people to the thing that they want, the right product, the thing that's going to help their life, the thing that tells their story. And I just love all the different types of media. I started in direct mail and through all the different types. And when social media came around, I was super stoked, loved all of them, but there was something about Instagram that I think elevated our relationships and our connection. It was like, blog and Twitter and Facebook and everything that just went all into one. And so that's kind of where I've been investing a lot more of my time and energy to helping brands and businesses connect with their audience through that, that channel. But I do love all the channels. I mean, did you just get on yesterday on threads? I sure did. Obviously. Yeah. I, I like feel super proud that I'm sub 500,000. Oh, um, I don't think I am. I think I'm like 570 or something. Yeah, I was wah, super wah. excited. I, wah, wah. Yeah, I'm loving threads so far. But yeah, as soon as like something comes out, you're on it, right? Well, you got it. You got to figure it out. You got to know what's going on. And you know, a lot of things have been like hurry and get on. And then you're like, eh, it's not sticky. It's not it's not interesting. I don't know if if and I my two criteria for myself is well, okay, three, but the main criteria is will this help businesses? And because that's where I spend a lot of my energy or will this be something my kids are into? Mm -hmm. And then the third is, do I just, do I love it? You know, is it something <laughs> for me? And usually the third isn't, isn't a, a thing if the other two aren't, you know, yeah. cause I usually love it if I can see the stickiness that a business would like, or that kids would like with it. So there's not a lot of things that I'm like, no, I just like this. Cause I just like this. Usually it, it comes with the other two. So so, so far, I mean, threads is a whole, not even day old yet. Right. And I'm, I'm seeing the stickiness, but they're going to have to change a few things up pretty quickly to keep people around. And I loved, I know this is not what we're talking about, but I love oh, that hey, Adam Mosseri like just admitted this morning, he was up all night. They got the 10 million subscribers in seven hours. And he said, but getting people on is the easy part. It's keeping people on is where the challenge is. And I love that he's so transparent and he's so, mm -hmm. you know, like that's true. Instead yeah. of just going like, cool, look at us. Why aren't you on here? Which is a little bit of what Zuckerberg did. Sure. <laughs> he totally did that. But Mosseri was like, okay, now we got to keep people on. We want to hear what's going on. Like, I love, I just think he's such a great face for these types of brands and products. So I'm just super stoked, but super yeah. interesting. Yeah, um, I did love that um, Zuckerberg tweeted um, the Spider-Man uh, meme. <laughs> Such a troll. I love I it, know, though. Right? <laughs> so funny. Uh, but yeah, I think with threads, like, yeah, there's definitely some things that need to, um, like, you know, I want to see just who I'm following. Um, that's going to have to come soon. It's got to come the first soon, thing. for sure. Yeah. Um, so that's like the one thing, but, uh, like you said, I usually will hop on like whatever new thing people are talking about, mainly just to reserve my username <laughs> because I am family tech everywhere. And like, I cannot let that go. But that's the nice thing about threads is that it was automatically like no one can squat on your name, which right. was pretty cool. Like if you already had an Instagram name you had first rights to have that name. So I thought that yeah. was pretty great because I think there's just a lot of people that, yeah, like that are afraid. Like I got to get my name. I got to get my name. Yeah. And I don't know when they'll release names if people don't sign I'll up. Claim That'll be yeah. interesting. But I don't know also, if they ever uh, would. If, if you have the Instagram name, I don't think they'd ever release it for 
I, you know, Good. sometimes I wish they would because there's yeah. plenty of people squatting on accounts that they've never posted on. Yes. So it would be nice. But the other thing that I'm curious about is, yes, there's like the whole home feed, follow feed, like we need some of that. Um, but it's also, I haven't figured out how to sign up with two accounts. And for some of us that have mm -hmm. multiple accounts and like I'm, I signed up on Kids Are the Worst, which was fun because that one has a lot more uh, reach automatically right. built in. But I wanted to do one more as the business side, and I, I can't figure out how to do it. It doesn't matter if I sign out. I can't sign in. So I'm trying to figure it out. But Interesting. You, okay, here's my tip. <laughs> Sorry yeah. for people listening that don't even like care, but my tip would be to just like to like set up a different phone. I know you have a couple laying around with just the Anna is the worst account yeah. and then sign up for threads there. That's what I was going to do. So I yeah. went to the phone that I, factory reset and yeah. just even trying to get it back going, it wanted to like pair with my phone. And right. take off. I was like, okay, I need a little more time. Too much work right now. I just, yeah, I just wanted to get on threads. I just needed <laughs> 10 more minutes to be like, patient about this. So yeah, anyway, for sure. fun times. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's awesome. what we both like to do. We both like to talk about like what's new and what's going on in the world and how it's affecting all of us, including yeah. our kids, you know, it matters. Exactly. So speaking of that, like, what do you think, you know, and especially with this threads coming out and everything is the most important thing to keep in mind when we're talking to our teens about social media, like the, like if you don't say anything else to your teen about social media, what do you think like the number one thing would be? The number one thing to talk to your kids about social media. I, and here's the, here's the interesting thing. Five years ago, I would have said that it will follow you, that there's no mm -hmm. such thing as, um, as temporary or 24 hours or whatever. Like, I feel like we really had to teach these kids that were older the elder millennials or even the <laughs> mid millennials, younger millennials, but this Gen Z, I swear they're like, they get it. They know it. They're not shocked by it. Yeah. And seriously, five years ago when I was going to middle schools and high schools and talking about, you know, that, that your content is on all these servers and not servers. <laughs> What's the word? No, it is servers. Is it you, servers? Oh, yeah. It was it, third party ISPs that you were. I know. What am I trying? I'm like, I said it wrong and Sarah fixed it. And now I can remember. I'm like, well, now I don't know what to say. Yeah, no, but, servers is correct. Good okay. job. But these third party servers that they can keep it for just an astronomical amount of time. And I always say, like, it's there's a limit to the amount of time now, but the law can change before that limit ends, you know, and then right. it keeps going. And anyway, so, and they were like shocked five, six years ago, like, wait, what? My Snapchats live somewhere. Like that was a shock to these, the, those kids then, yeah. but kids now they're like, duh, right. <laughs> they, like they get it. Like, so yeah, like, I knew what, that mom. Thanks. <laughs> right. So what would I tell a kid now? I would probably, um, I probably think the number one thing I would say is, um, to, to understand, um, I, this is a t tricky question because my mind's going in a few different places like that, that it's not going to go anywhere. They're going to have some kind of social media in their future, in their life, in, you know, whatever they do for business or work. And even if, even if they're like, I'm going to go live on a farm out in the middle of nowhere there's probably going to be a time where you're like, Oh, I got to sell my eggs and my, all the produce I'm creating. What's the best way to do it? It's not a farm stand, you know, anyway. So yeah. I think I would say like, learn how to use it in a safe space with very safe, um, restrictions and in a place with me and your dad or whomever who can help you feel confident, like feel confident yeah. on it, not afraid of it because Confidence is going to help you make better choices and fear is going to help create more of frustration and anxiety and maybe make more mistakes. So maybe that, maybe it's like, yeah. how do we build the confidence for you? Where do we start? And, and 
asking them like, how do you feel? How confident do you feel? So I'm not super sure. Like, yeah, what's, what would your number one be that you would tell? You know, I, cause well, at first I, I was kind of g- going along the lines that you were that like, everything's permanent, you yeah. know, stuff. Uh, my favorite from the social network quote is things uh, in, on the internet are written in pen, um, not in pencil. And, but what you're saying, actually, I think I'm switching, I'm switching because yeah. I think being the like owner or being in control of what you see online is the most important thing. So like how we always kind of talk about it, like training the algorithm, like not being afraid to unfollow someone who makes you feel bad or, you know, not being afraid to kind of like disengage or set some time limits for yourself. Um, I think that is probably the most important thing is learning how to manage it yourself. Yeah, because it's confidence in what you share, but like your point is confidence in what you receive. Yeah. You know, and it's not this, oh, it's so bad. Stay away from it. It's what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. And how do you feel confident enough to make that decision for you so that it is serving you and you're not serving it? Yeah. And I think that's like, that is something that, that I think they need to learn so that once they get to that age of adulthood and they're out there doing whatever they're doing, they're not thinking of it as scarcity, as bad, as frustration, as anxiety, as all these other things. They're like, no, wait, I'm in control. Yeah. So I get to choose right. how this goes. So I think that would be my thing, but yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. I'm like, thanks. That totally like changed my complete answer. <laughs> it changed mine as I said it. So I was yeah. like, thanks for the question. Cause I was right. like, what would it be? But yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome. Um, so like, that's a great approach. What do you think is like an approach that just absolutely does not work? The for- opposite, right? The, so opposite. the total fear is yeah. the, I understand the dumb phone. I understand why people feel more comfortable with something that doesn't have any type of social media on it. And and again, there are different age groups and they're different kids and they're all those types of things. But I think that parents put their own fear on these platforms, on these apps, on these programs, on these phones. And then kids don't feel like they can talk about it. They don't feel like they can share when, when they've seen something, whether it's on their friend's phone or on a grandparent's phone or on the television, you know, it's that, that creating those fearful hurdles that don't have conversation and communication and, and safety in them. So we think we're being safe, but we're actually removing the safety in our relationship in, in the conversation and then in the, um, the confidence building for, for your kids. So it's that no social media or talking about how bad social media is. Yeah, I completely agree. I'm, you know, you know me, I'm a big, like, I hate fear mongering so, so much. And there is so much of it when it comes to technology and, you know, the parents are afraid of it. And so their fear, they're trying to project that fear onto the kids, but the kids aren't afraid of it, but they like become not necessarily afraid of it. But like you said, with that scarcity, like they try and get to is like, okay, like what is this big, bad thing I'm supposed to be afraid of? You know, I want to like look behind the curtain and see, you know, what's going on. And I think that just kind of pushes them to be sneaky about it and things like that. Totally. I mean, the amount of DMs I've gotten about that very thing, about the sneakiness Mm -hmm. that, you know, you have an otherwise great kid who's doing all the things that that they should be doing, but that are, you know, signed up, aligned and getting their homework done, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And because of this fear of saying social media is bad, but they have this curiosity, their other, their friends are on it, or they're not sure why it's bad. I mean, when we, we create this, this deep curiosity for something that isn't, isn't this, um, you know, I'm not talking like drugs here. Like, this is not like you don't have to have drugs in every store or, you know, there's, this is something that we're actually using. Again, we, I always use the example of the car, but it's like, you know, this constant fear of something that people are actually using, that they're surrounded by, that they see that they are going to find a way to figure out what it's about or see it. And then it turns into a problem. Then it turns right. into like the sneakiness, the, 
the feeling like, well, when something bad happens, who do I go to? Who do I talk to about it? How do I remedy it? How do I fix it? Yeah. They, they don't know how to fix it. And we're not teaching them how to fix it. We're teaching them how to hide it. Mm-hmm. And that's like the worst thing for a, for a person to feel like they can't have a place to fail, to learn, to grow when it's just like only alone. And that's where I think a lot of the problems stem. Yeah, for sure. I think the other problem is kind of like the almost opposite opposite of that is when parents are trying to be sneaky about like monitoring and parental controls and things like that. I think that approach is obvious. I can speak today. Um, That approach is completely wrong when you're trying to like build trust with your kids when you're like, I am secretly monitoring everything you're doing, but I'm not going to talk to you about it. I'm not going to like do anything. I think that's just the wrong approach as well. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, when you think about what the big goal is, like the goal is to get your kid to be an adult, right? Like, <laughs> yes, that's the big goal. 100%. And, and even though I have two kids that have moved out, um, I, I air quotes totally <laughs> intended because <laughs> they, you know, they're still come around and a yeah. lot of things you learn when you have adult kids. But, um, but the goal is not for them to live with me forever. You know, mm-hmm. I'm so glad they're still kind of around and connected, but the goal is to get them to be on their own, to be adults, to be good members of society, et cetera, et cetera. And if we're sneaking, checking on them and there's not that trust built, how do they learn that they are capable? How do yeah. they learn what they did wrong if mm-hmm. it's just feeling like someone's constantly like tracking them, watching them and and not feeling like they can choose or they can talk or they can um, decide, you know, or any of those things. Like the goal is yeah. that. So we have to kind of make the it's that reverse engineering. If that's the goal, then wh- what do we do going backwards through our monitoring and our talking and our conversations and our social that we can help them get to that point? Yeah. I literally tell that to my kids all the time. Like anytime I'm trying to like teach them something, I'm like, my entire job is to make sure you are an adult. Like that is all I am here to do is to make sure when you turn 18 or you graduate from high school, you can move out, go to college, be on your own. And you, I mean, Obviously, you'll need me for yeah, all of the things, for sure. But, but that's the whole goal is to just make sure that you know they are um, adults. So yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, we have a couple questions here. Yeah. So where can I find threads? And so I, I think we we kind of buried the lead on that one um, and didn't really explain. Like you know, we're in social media, know, so we know everything that's going on. But so threads is the new quote unquote, Twitter killer um, I love that. I know, from Meta. So Meta owns Instagram and Facebook and WhatsApp. And so now they have launched a new app called Threads. What were you going to so say? What I think is so interesting is that they're calling it an Instagram app. Isn't that interesting? They're not that calling is it interesting. a Meta app. That is very Meta interesting. Meta owns Instagram. But right. I think that's a really interesting. So yeah, it's its own standalone app that you can find in the app store, but it connects yeah. to your Instagram account. Yeah. Uh, can you, do you know if you can sign up without an Instagram account? I think you can. I'm right. Sh- yeah. Because, because it does have that when you sign up for it, it does say like, do you want to import from Instagram? But does it say what's your Instagram account? That's a great question. I need, yeah, well, I, don't I, remember, I, I, my- I went through so fast. Cause I'm like, in, in, in. <laughs> when it, I know. Cause it announced early and I was like, <gasps> yeah, it was like this big surprise. Like, cause if you had signed up to be notified, but yeah. I, I'll, I'll look at it when I go through to, on my second <laughs> For kids are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Anna is the worst. Um, yeah. So that's what threads is. Um, and it ties to Instagram. You're able to like follow the people you already follow on Instagram really easily, allegedly. which allegedly. <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, and so it's, it's really kind of Twitter esque, um, yeah. like, uh, very language, not language, but like, you know, text based. Um, I mean, lots a of, lot of images, yeah. lots of photos, just like Twitter has become 
Yeah. But yeah. It's more conversation based, I would say. Yeah. 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 I totally agree with that. So that's what Threads is. Um, and yeah, you can just download it from the App Store. Um, the one caveat that I've seen a bunch um, the, today is you can't delete your Threads account without deleting your Instagram account. Like, Get out. Yeah. So if you try and like delete right Threads, it will delete your Instagram account. So you mean the app? Or no, no, no. Yeah, you can delete the app, like, but like to try and like remove your account from threads, it will um it will delete your Instagram. They'll have so. to change that. They'll have to. Right. <laughs> yeah. So right. that like be a little careful with the Instagram, uh or not the Instagram, but the uh the, the delete button there. Um this other out. question is what about be real? Um what about what about be real? Uh be real is an app that kids use. <laughs> oh, um, it's good for teenagers lifestyle, what they share, what they think. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm a fan of be real. I think it's a good app. They, again, um, as, uh, background information, if they install be real, it's going to send them a notification. It sends everybody in the world, the same notification at the exact same time. That's the like be real posting window. And you're supposed to just take a picture of what you're doing right then. You can post late if you want. There's like really no penalty. Um, like, but you can't see other people's be reels until they, until you post yours. So it's a fun app. It's <laughs> fun. I, I, I feel like it's a fun starter app. But yeah, for like the kids who aren't ready for actual social media. Yeah, for sure. I say actual as in, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is social, but it is, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not something that would pull you in for too long. Yeah. Yeah, Hopefully. for sure. All right. So let's get back to um, our other conversation about yeah. social media and kids. So um like we kind of already touched on this, like mm -hmm. some of the things that's important for kids to understand, like our number one thing, but what else would we also make sure they understand about social media as we're trying to talk to them? Um, I mean, there are so many things that they need to understand. I mean, that, yes, that it's permanent. Yes, that, um, th I mean, one of my favorite things to talk about with my kids is their ability to unfollow whomever they want. Yeah. And that is like, they, it's weird when you say it out loud, but think about it for yourself too, that you need permission <laughs> to unfollow people or mute people. And, mm -hmm. and the mute is like the best invention on social media, I think in like mute and archive. For and sure. I think those have been so helpful for people that saving relationships, but, um, you know, and again, in a weird way, blaming the algorithm. Oh, I didn't <laughs> oh, see, I can't see. <laughs> the algorithm. You know? <laughs> but, but I think those things like letting your kids know that they can mute people, they can mm -hmm. unfollow that they, they, they have to take responsibility for what they are, um, following and seeing and, and again, you know, you and I've talked a lot about, about training the algorithm, like letting them know that they're more in control of that and they need to, um, spend the time and energy to make it something that is benef benefiting them, not just, um, what everyone else is doing or, or even, um, becoming a slave to the, the product, but becoming, mm -hmm. you know, an owner of the kind of content they're creating or consuming. So, you know, that I think is a weird thing that you don't think they need is that permission to mute, to unfollow, to train so that they get a curated and helpful situation or yeah. experience. Yeah. And I think that's a big thing, um, that came out of, I don't know if you read the whole, um, advisory from the attorney general. Yeah, um, I didn't read the whole thing, but I read a lot. Of <laughs> I read the whole thing on live on a YouTube video. You did? Yeah, I did. Um, it, it's super eye opening. I really, really liked it because most of the stuff that comes out of the government, I, um, am not a fan of, mm -hmm. you know, all this like legislation mm -hmm. around social media and kids kind of hate all of it. Mm -hmm. But this I really, really enjoyed because he did talk about the benefits of social media and how you can basically make sure it's not affecting your mental health, you know, and a few things that you can do to do that. Like, you know, 
give yourself a time limit and mm -hmm. unfollow people that you don't follow. But like when he was talking about the benefits, he's talking about how so many kids who, you know, are, and especially in like marginalized communities and things like that, they are finding community on social media and really helping them to see that they're like not alone in some of the struggles that they have and some of the things they're doing. So I love what you're saying here. Like when, you know, unfollow people that you don't want to follow or just mute them because, you know, you don't want the awkward like, oh, I'm not following you anymore. Um, you know, but mute them if it's making you feel bad about yourself. And you don't have to follow accounts that make you feel bad um, and do follow accounts that make you feel good. Um, and like trying to figure out what those accounts are and um, and how to find your community. I think that's a good, I, I'm like, oh, hey, let's talk about that. Like, how would you think to find your community on any of these like social media apps? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's, and on, let me just say really quickly what you're saying about the attorney general. I, yeah. when I read reports, I'm always looking for a report that says both the positive and the negative. If it says yeah. just the negative, I'm immediately turned off because I just think it's not understanding like for anything, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's a reason why people do things and there has to, you have to understand the positive to understand the negative yeah. and, and same vice versa. You know, I think that that's a really good just tip in general, that if you are reading an article that just seems all negative about something, then realize that what does that article want you to do? Or yeah. what is the goal? What are they, what are they trying to control your emotion and your fear to do? Because it's not to educate you. It's mm -hmm. to help you think something or push you in a direction. And, and it's, it's all just like, again, being someone who's been in marketing for so long, I, I, I understand like manipulation and the way that people are trying to get you to do something at the end of it. So, you know, that's just something I talk to my kids about a lot is like, follow the money, follow right. the fear. Why are you feeling that? Who's benefiting from that? And mm -hmm. so if there's not a positive, it doesn't help the negative and vice versa. So I'm, I'm yeah. so glad that you mentioned that. Um, but to talk about with kids, uh, understanding how they can find their communities, there are a lot of ways. I mean, is this like, where you want to talk about like how you can train your algorithm to kind of find that? Sure. I mean, we can, we can touch on that. I mean, we, we dig real deep into that, um, Good. in the course that we sell, uh, yes. link in the description. <laughs> so. Yes. But, uh, but yeah, we can touch briefly on training the algorithm and like, I think maybe more like, cause that's kind of like where you're consuming the content. Right. Like what about like, you know, where you can interact with people that like are similar to you? Yeah. I mean, the, the social media has gotten so smart that we used to have to search hashtags, right? That was like right. the ultimate search engine for social media was hashtags. And now they're so much smarter that we are searching not just all the text and all the text in your bio, but even the text that comes out of the pictures through the yeah. AI that understands what the pictures are, right? Mm -hmm. Even though that's been happening for a long time, but nobody talked about it until <laughs> Sure. But... You know, I think that if, if we go and use search for things, and mm -hmm. this is why it's also really good to talk to kids so that they're aware that, you know, that they are using search for whatever they're searching for. And right. so, yes, it's, it's a little bit of like, I think people don't want to talk to their kids because they're afraid their kids are going to go right to, you know, um, <laughs> make it inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Or, you know, something that they're like, oh, don't look up that kind of stuff, you right. know, but l talking to them through it and saying like, yeah, you could, you know, I don't suggest you do this because this, 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 um, yeah. but the other things you can do is you really love, um, you know, cats in costume. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought of. I don't know, why I <laughs> but let's look up. I love that. Know. That's the first thing that comes into your head. I was <laughs> like, no, it was actually in my mind. <laughs> But I couldn't figure it out. It's probably like Star Wars cat. I was imagining a, a cat for some reason with a lightsaber. Like, did I dream it? Did I see it sometime? Why was that in my head? I think I saw a picture of that on thread. So like maybe I'm it was there. Probably. I'm sure it's like, because I was thinking like, what would a kid go? Oh yeah. That's people like me right. are really into like, um, cats that are in and Star Wars. And sure. so like to find a lightsaber wielding cat, you know, mm -hmm. so you go in to search something like that and then you start finding it, you go find the account and you immediately can see like, oh, this isn't 
this isn't for me. Don't click on those, but click right. on the ones that you can see. Oh, this looks like something I would be interested in. And then you can, yeah, start interacting with that account. And mm -hmm. the algorithms are there to serve us, to make it easier for us. They're not these horrible, mean guys. There's nobody <laughs> in it, right? There's computers. Right. And they want to give us the things we want. So when we type those things in and then click on that photo and then engage with that photo, it goes, huh. Maybe they want to see more cats in costumes and Star Wars info. Like, yes, yeah. that is who I am. And it could be something of like, yes, marginalized communities when you can find like, look at there are other people like me mm -hmm. who are also dealing with this thing that I'm dealing with, whether that's health, whether that's identity, whether that's, um, you know, the, the issues you have with learning or education. Like there are so many cool resources out there too that like, We've talked about this with my kids, like when they first got on TikTok and I was um, with them in understanding TikTok and this was right. before TikTok was bananas, but it was still yeah. crazy, but it was before it was like bananas. And everyone's like, it's just dancing. It's just dancing. It's just dancing. And they were finding these teachers during early 2020 when they weren't in school, when they were mm -hmm. doing remote school. And they were finding these teachers who got on TikTok and were teaching different ways to learn science and math. And it was like... I remember my daughter being like, oh, I finally get it. Like her yeah. teachers didn't give her that, but she could find this type of a resource for her type of learning, you know, that was so cool that she yeah. could go find that and like get inspired and pass her class and, and benefit from something like that's really rad. Yeah, I love that. So I don't have ADHD. I know um, you might. And might. my daughter, I, I didn't want to like call you out, but <laughs> um, but my daughter does. And the amount of like reels about ADHD that she sends me on like a daily basis is hilarious. She'll just like send me a reel like, oh, I feel this. Like, oh, this is so me. It's so validating. Yeah. Like there are times when there were, there are a couple of ADHD things, you know, cause yeah, I'm talking to my doctor about it and, you know, I'm talking to my son who has it, but his is pre presents totally differently. Sure. And, you know, you have a few people that you talk to, but then there's like something that comes out and I see it on a reel or in a post because it was suggested to me. Right. And yeah. I'm like, Oh, is that a sign of ADHD? And then I go, I can go then research it. And I'm like, Oh, and it totally makes you feel validated and safe. Like yeah. I'm not that kind of thing that I do is just another part of this thing that I have that I've learned to just like love and forgive and accept and work through. And I think because of social media, I've been able to like embrace it. Yeah. And I think I, that's really cool. Yeah. And I think that's been helpful for my daughter too. Cause you know, like I said, I, it's not something that I deal with. So I have a hard time like you know, understanding what's going on in her brain, but like she sees these and she's like, oh yeah, this is exactly what's happening in my brain. Um, here, mom, like here's a little, and it helps me understand it a little bit better too. Cause I'm like, oh, okay. I understand why you did that now or something yeah. like that. So kind of creates more understanding in general. Totally. Yeah. I've sent them to my husband and then I'm like, yeah. oh, now he's like, oh, so I need to say it like this to you. I'm like, yes. Right. And it, it's, it's like, I don't have to ask, I don't have to say it. I can send it to him. And then someone else said it. <laughs> There's yeah. the bad guy. Right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really helpful for kids to feel like they're not alone, you know? Yeah. Um, and then back to that point too, like where it's helping other people understand what, you know, somebody who's not going through it is dealing with. And this was years ago before, like, you know, the TikToks and all of that. But, um, I was watching a video of this like relationship expert on like a lifestyle show mm -hmm. and he was explaining something and like, I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's my husband. Like, and my, like I had a, an epiphany. Yeah. I'm like that. I completely now understand like my entire relationship. Mm -hmm. And so just stuff like that, where you find something on social media where you're like, Oh, like my whole world now makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, and it, it's a cool space that kids, like, again, it's, it's a, it's an amount they can do, you know, right. they don't want to be consuming that all the time. We yeah. understand that we get that. I love that. Um, 
that post you put up recently. It's one I've loved as well, like where it shows then and they're all just standing on the street reading newspapers and now yeah. and they're reading phones. I love that because it's so um, against what we're being told that yes. I've used air quotes so many times. I'm going to try to stop <laughs> air quotes. But when people say like, oh, everyone's just on their phones, get off their phones and look around. It's like, there's always something that distracts, that informs. It's not like we go, oh, newspapers are bad. I mean, right. yeah, there's sometimes they are, right? Whatever. But also there's like an information and there's a, there's, you know, I'm learning something. I'm getting more information about the world and politics and sports and all these things. And like, yeah, that's also what your phone does. You know, it can do the same thing for you. And we can't just say like, it's so bad that kids want to be online. But if yeah. your nose was in a newspaper for 10 hours a day, then you go, yeah, that's a problem. Right. So it's it's knowing that it's not either or, it's and, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I love that you brought that up because I think parents today um, forget how we were when we were kids. And, you know, when I was a kid, I spent the entire summer at my friend's house sitting in front of MTV watching music videos all day. Right. And we as parents now, like, we'll be like, oh my gosh, you've been playing on a video game all day long. Or, I mean, and granted, I, I make sure they have natural breaks. I set like, you know, time limits and I give them additional time. Yeah. But I remember sitting in front of MTV literally all day. And it's like to think that that's different than what they're doing um, somehow is really disingenuous, I think. Yeah. We've talked about this too. Like how, you know, if you put everything that we did as kids, like on a typical Friday night or Saturday, you know, it was watching the cartoons, depending right. on your age, say by the bell yeah. or <laughs> whatever. And anyway. it was, you know, listening to the radio and, um, you know, having your headphones on or whatever for hours a day, talking to your friends for hours a day, trying to call <laughs> one and then call the other and then like, see what's going on with everyone, you know, and all these things that we did, there's so many of the different types of things that are all found on one thing, right? you know, like even doing homework and calculator and learning and like the things that we think it's not just entertainment, there's information, there's, you know, staying in contact with, with family and grandparents and friends that are far away and reaching out. And, you know, instead of writing a nice letter, snail mail, they're writing a nice text or a nice email. Like there are a lot of things, but it just so happens that it all happens on one or two devices. And so we forget that if we broke it up, that's how we were, you know, right. And yeah. that was not like, I mean, yeah, I'm sure our parents were like, get outside more yeah. or whatever. My parents weren't because I grew up in Arizona and I don't know if you saw it's gonna be 115 this week in the summer. Oh, like, remember this? That's like you get unbearable. to a point where you're like, what can we do inside? <laughs> Cause it's so hot, that but terrible, terrible, but like, you know, so it's not like, Oh, get outside all the time. Like it's summer, it's hot or in the winter, sometimes it's snowing. So there's other things and we can't, we can't make this a villain when it's doing so many of the things all on one device that we did on separate devices. Yeah, absolutely. I love that you bring that up because it is like, you know, I watched MTV. I was like on the phone with my friends, uh, you know, but all of these different things are now from the same device, you know, right. or like I was playing Nintendo, like yeah. again, gaming, phone calls, texting. I mean, we didn't have texting, but you know, all yeah. of those things are now found on one device. So yeah, it's going to take up more time. But if you break it into all of the different things that you're doing, it, it might be a lot more similar to what we did. Yeah. I mean, reading encyclopedias, right. like all, there are so many things that all happen on your phone. Like, did you have encyclopedias growing up? Oh yeah. 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 We had two sets because <laughs> we were really, really blessed. Nice. I remember because we moved a lot and I was like, every time I'm like these stupid encyclopedias, so but I loved it because when I had to do a paper, you always had to cite two different sources and it was always like, <laughs> I got two bibliographies. I've got Brit Britannica. Yeah, that's so right. Saying. Yeah, bibliography. You're right. No, I'm saying bibliography for my citing. What am I trying to say? Did I say it right? No, that's exactly encyclopedias. Right. That's what I was trying to Gosh. Oh, I think yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Encyclopedia. Gosh, I think I, I thought I saw bibliography twice. Anyway. Encyclopedia. You reference the encyclopedia in the bibliography. There it is. So the encyclopedias are just also on their phone. Like just so much stuff. Like how cool that these, 
the resources that they have, that they don't have to just have two old encyclopedias. They don't have to just have the books that are in the house. They don't, you know, they can listen to books if that helps them. They can read mm -hmm. books. They can, you know, they can watch clips of things. They can see, you know, it's just, there's just so much. And so we have to remember that and remind ourselves that that's what they're doing. They're, they're just doing a lot of different things and just talking to them about what they're doing on it. Yeah. Um, and I love that you brought up encyclopedias because I'm going to tangent for one second yeah, yeah, yeah. and throw myself completely under the bus. I'm ready. <laughs> so my, I have two older brothers um, and one of them was out of the house already, but so I had an older brother and we had a foreign exchange student who was his age, who was living with us from Denmark. And um, he was a senior in high school and I, I'm like maybe three or four years younger than my brother. And you had a question and, on the foreign exchange student? No, no, no. no. Okay. I, I, I mean, he was like go. another brother to me. It was okay. fine. No, but they like loved to try and convince me of things. Mm. And so like we were in Boston on vacation. We're looking at the harbor. My brother's like, you know, it still tastes like tea, right? Um, and, you know, totally believed it. Like I didn't like drink it or anything, but I'm like, yeah, they put a lot of tea in there. So it yeah. kind of makes sense. Um, but anyway, they got it in their head that they were going to convince me that there was two moons in Denmark. And like, they would like, they gaslit me to like no end because they'd like sprinkle it in the conversations that I wasn't even a part of. Like, like I'd be in the kitchen and they'd be in like the family room. And he's like, oh, I was on this date. And we were like looking at the moons. Like, you know, they would totally like just sprinkle it in. Like they were like expert, right? Yeah. And then it wasn't until my dad busted out the encyclopedia and showed me that there's like 11 moons on Jupiter or something. And then I'm like, well, okay. And then they like died, you know, they're like, we got it. Like they totally convinced me, but like, it wasn't until he busted out our encyclopedia and showed me that there's like 11 moons on Jupiter. Like granted, he didn't show me that there's more moons on earth, you know, that's he so showed funny. me Jupiter. But anyway, that's my fun encyclopedia. Story. I love it. Well, isn't that <laughs> funny that we had to go to that? We couldn't be just be like, <laughs> like now we're like, wait, how many moons are there? And you're like, hold on. How many yeah. moons are there? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And like, saves a lot of grief. A lot of grief. Right. Right. You can't really convince me of stuff anymore. I have yeah. Google. Yeah. Except our kids for can't get T's very long either. So yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Except for with ChatGPT, like he invents stuff. So that's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> and the, see, that's so fun to be able to talk to your kids about because they're like, oh, I can write papers now. And you're like, ooh, did you hear about this thing that happened? And then they're like, oh, okay, I guess I can't use it. I don't know. It's fun. Yeah. Well, and you know, that's a great point though. I think it's important to talk to our kids about stuff like that. So with ChatGPT, um, I, I'm sure you heard about the lawyer who used ChatGPT to cite court cases and submitted that to a federal judge in New York. And the like defense counsel was like, um, we can't find these court cases. Like, where did you get them? The lawyer goes back to ChatGBT and is like, hey, so those court cases, they're totally real, right? And ChatGBT is right? like, I got you, boo. They're, yeah, they're totally real. And then he like doubles down and submits that response to the federal judge again. And like, these are completely fabricated cases. Like ChatGBT just made them up. And like, that's something that you need, like, hey, if you're going to try and use this for a yeah. report or something like that, this is a lawyer who's been practicing yeah. for 30 years and was convinced that ChatGPT gave him correct court cases. And maybe you should um, double check and go double into another check. source. You remember? Remember the bibliography? Maybe. Two sources. <laughs> Two sources. <laughs> bust yeah. out the encyclopedia Britannica mm -hmm. and chat GPT. There you go. Well, I think just even like with threats, you know, the new app talking to my kids about it and just letting them know. So they don't feel like there are things that they teach me, of course, you know, but I, again, this is partly what we both do. So it's easy to say, and it's not how everyone feels, but like, sometimes you have to be the one who knows. And sometimes they're going to be the one who knows, you know, my kids taught me how to like move my cursor with my thumb, you know, to get, you know, instead of having to leap, this was a couple years ago, but I was like, oh, 
that was the coolest trick. You know, they teach me these little tricks sometimes because it's yeah. very obvious for them. But then I can come in and say, yay, hey, did you hear about this threads? And here's here's what we're going to do before none of them want it right now. But I'm like, sure. before you get on it, let me get on it for a while. Let, let's let some things go through the process of, you know, all the people getting on, let's see what it's like and, and you experiencing it for them, but also talking to them about it. So it's not just me going, let me do it. And then I'll tell you, but I'm right. telling them as I'm on, I'm like, Oh, it's a little, this, it's a little, that like, it's a little convoluted here, but I can see why you might like this eventually if, and, and so they feel like they're in mm -hmm. the no. They don't feel like, oh, I just got to wait till my mom tells me if I can or can't. If They, they just want to feel like they're aware of things too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that because there's especially like with news and things like, well, my daughter will watch Nintendo Direct and like and come to me and tell me all about like the new games coming out right. or, you know, whatever. Or like I'll see something about the MetaQuest 3 and like I'll be like, hey, you know, Michael, my son. um, Hey, did you see about the medical? So he's like, oh yeah, it's lame because of this and this and this, you know? <laughs> and so I love that you are like, Hey, they can actually teach you and you can teach them. And it's a mutual like give and take where you're like, you don't have to have all the answers, especially if they come to you and like, Hey, I want to know about this. Okay. You know what? I don't know about that. Let's research it together or yeah. Or why don't you research it and let me know what you think first? Because um, I know we talked about this in the past of like yeah. having them research like an app that they want to have um, mm -hmm. and presenting that to you. Yeah, but it's it's all about the conversation and having it continue to go. You know, it's it's not like, okay, we're going to sit down with them once every six months and talk about their phone usage right. or talk about the apps or, okay, there's something new. So we're going to have a family meeting and we're going to talk about this. Like it is so prevalent in life. I'm not even going to say their lives or our lives. It's just prevalent it everywhere. You just go down the street and you look at like any of the stores, they're like, follow us on Facebook. The hospitals are telling me to follow them on Facebook. And I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah. but you know, like it's, it's omnipresent. It's everywhere. Yeah. And so it's not just like, okay, let's sit in the car. Okay. Now it's time to talk about social media. It's not the talk, you know, yeah. it's not like in, in, and I have a good friend who's a sex therapist too. And she would say the same thing about sex. It's like, it's not just a one-time sit down. Like it's a constant conversation, mm -hmm. but I would, I would say probably cause I'm biased cause I'm on social media a lot more than I'm, I don't, I don't know how I was going to say that next part, but I think we should <laughs> talk about social media more than we talk about even sex because it is yeah. always around. It is always going to be every day. They're going to have to deal with it, you know, with their friends and understand it. So it's just has to feel like a constant conversation. It has to feel like they can walk through the kitchen and say, Hey mom, this thing happened mm -hmm. and not feel like, wait, come back. Tell me everything. Okay. Let's right. sit down. Let's get out the little you know, paper where I write things down and then we resign. You know what I'm saying? Like, just let's make it super awkward and weird. Yeah. It just has to feel like it's a part of the, the conversation. So they feel like they can talk to you. So they feel really comfortable with you in it because it is, it's a thing it's happening. It's life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I so, so love that. Um, I think what we're talking, like when you're talking to them, in having these like frequent conversations, it's important to, you know, bring up like latest news, you know, like you said, so the threads, or, um, I always talk about when you see a big like news article of like, um, kids getting, you know, not kidnapped, but like, you know, but sometimes kidnapped and things like that. And these are like heavy, heavy topics. Um, actually a good one to talk about is the whole, um, Miranda sings like, oh, um, right. Yeah. It's controversy right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that's something like if you approach it in a very fear based way where you're like, oh, I can't believe like I we're locking down everything like so this doesn't happen. You can't talk to anybody, you know, and you kind of go that extreme other end when these like news things come out then, you know, they're not going to be like, super, like, it's going to be an awkward conversation. But if you're like, Hey, let's talk about this. Like, do you think she was in the wrong? What do you think? Like, 
what do you think the parents could have done better? What do you think the kid could have done better? Um, and have those conversations instead of like a big like, ah. Yeah. And even like speaking of Miranda Sings, and I think it's ironic because we're going to be on YouTube with this. Yeah, we are <laughs> like on YouTube I tell right my now. Kids, Hello, YouTube. I know. Hi. I hate YouTube. <laughs> but like I tell my kids, like like Miranda Sings was kind of, you know, a, a lower grade, but like a Mr. Beast. Like people know who yeah. she was. There were kids who just loved her and followed her. And like she would do these live chats. And like if you got a shout out from Mr. Beast, how would you feel? Right. And they're like, oh, my God gosh, are you kidding? Like it would be the best thing ever. And they have a lot of other names of people, but he's yeah. just like the, the biggest. So it's sure. easy to like use him as an example. He got to a million on threads before Zuck. <laughs> he is such an enigma to me. Like I can't, yeah. he's so fascinating. He's yeah. so amazing what he's been able to do anyway. Yeah. Side note. Side but note. when I say like Mr. Beast, like how would that have felt? That's how people felt with Miranda Sings. Right. And so you see her as like this total has been because you're younger and she's not part of that culture that you no. grew up with. But like, let's look like, can you imagine Mr. Beast? And I just like, this is how I talk to them about it. Instead of going, well, what do you think? It's like, well, look yeah. at this. Can you imagine Mr. Beast pulling out a ukulele to like give his apology? Right. Like, wouldn't that be like <laughs> so weird? Yeah. Like, do you think that seems genuine? And then like, just look at that. So then they compare it to kind of something they know. They're like, yeah, right. that's, that really doesn't sit well with me. Yeah. Why don't you think it sits well with you as well? It just feels like, you know, and so it's instead of just being like, yeah, I don't get it. I, I don't know who she is. Like this can yeah. happen. All these people you follow, something's going to come out about half of them. Guarantee you. Right. Like everyone, like everyone you think that is just simple or plain like jared from subway stuff oh, like right that. yeah like you know oh, it's just, oh, who so is terrible it? Who cares? but then yeah. you're like whoa so then it just gives them that that conversation to say these are people there are a lot of flawed people it's good to know you know where we're putting our time and energy and who we're supporting that we don't have any of this control we don't know who they are so right. you know we take all this with a grain of salt and understand like what are we doing with the rest of our lives and 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 then they just go oh yeah but I love the Miranda Sings examples because yeah that was one that we were like so what do you think about the ukulele right <laughs> yeah, fun <laughs> I mean it's a catchy little ditty but is it is <laughs> she got I think why it's catchy is at one point I was like wait this is from that show on the Disney channel that was like all aboard the choo-choo chain. <gasps> all aboard. All aboard. Choo-choo. Do you remember that? It was Yes. Wait. Yes. Like choo-choo soul? Yes. Yes. There was part of when she was doing like all aboard the gossip train or whatever that was. I can't yes. Remember. And I was like, she did a little thing. I'm like, that's like choo-choo soul. Or, I just forgot that's what soul. it was called. But I'm like, yeah. I remember it. Like it just kept, she kept reminding me of different songs, but we all artists steal. Right. Right. And I think that's like, I mean, it's not the fact that like, it's a great song or anything. It's just like, it's kind of like an earworm where it's just I like, <laughs> but then as a marketer, then I say yeah. to my kids, what is her goal here? Her right. Goal is to get talked about. And it worked. Yeah. If she had just gone on and apologized, people would be like, oh, that's nice. But guess what? Everyone's mimicking it, mocking it, redoing it, talking about it on TikTok. So yeah. in a way, even though it's like a sad way to get talked about, it's yeah. an effective way. And what do we know, children, is that all press, all press is, good, is press. good press. Yeah, even bad press. You know, and so it's just it's just that like, okay, so what's what's the goal here? What is what does she want from us? She wants us to talk about her. Here we are. Yeah. She wants us to like she wants to be relevant. Here it is. You know, and even if it's bad, because then she could come back and rise up again. You know, there's all these things that you kind of look through. And so you're like, am I being manipulated? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But it's and fun to just have that conversation so they can understand what's happening. Yeah. Um, I like what you said there with the we never know what's really going on behind the scenes of anybody. Like, and I think that's an important thing for kids to understand, especially with social media, you know, like you have your friends posting these great pictures of them having fun. They're at the beach or they're on vacation or they're at a party or whatever, but you don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. And there could be, you know, really bad stuff going on and they're just putting on a front. So, you know, telling them not to compare their real life with someone else's highlight reel, I think is a really important thing. Like, cause you never know. And I think they, I think like, again, I'm comparing, you know, five, 10 years ago where, when my older daughter was 
in this stage to where my now 13 and 17 year old are in it. It's, and maybe it's because we've talked about it longer and they are, you know, remember me talking about it with my daughter, but they, they get it. They know that it's not real, but they still need someone to say like, that hurts. Yeah. You know, like I, I do remember not being invited to things and it wasn't immediate that I found out, but I always found out. Mm -hmm. And so and we've talked about this before, but I feel like it feels important to say right now is that when we talk to our kids about social media, a lot of times I notice people, our generation, these parents are saying, I'm so glad I didn't have this when I was your age. Uh -huh. And we really, we really discount their reality. Mm -hmm. We are shutting down their life. And their reality by saying, I'm so glad I don't have, I didn't have this when I was a kid. I'd be in so much trouble or yeah. it would have been the worst thing. But guess what? They do have this. And so when we say like, oh, I, I can't imagine what it'd be like to have social media when your friends are hanging out without you, pause. Remember, this is real for them. This is happening. It's not about your life. But also, you did know what it felt like when people hung out without you. You might have heard about it the next day or someone called you or you heard about it at school or you saw pictures, you know, later or whatever. But we all felt left out. Yeah. And just take that emotion instead of having to compare it tit for tat and be like, I don't know what that's like. And social media is the worst. Just go like, oh, that really hurts. I'm yeah. sorry you have to see that. Let them Let them have this reality mm -hmm. of it being uncomfortable and just let them talk through it. Like, how does yeah. this make you feel? Like, do you want to talk about it more? Or, you know, what would you like to do? You know, and just help them process it instead of, you know, telling them how to feel about it or worse is what I think a lot of people do is they just go and poop all over social media and going, right. I'm just so glad I didn't have it when I was a kid. Yeah. Like, that's not really helping. That doesn't yeah. help. For sure. I mean, I didn't even need social media. Like, uh, this was several years ago. I, I've always worked, you know, and um, I went out to lunch um, just to grab lunch at, during my lunch break or whatever. And I get Wait, to the you went restaurant. went out to lunch during your lunch break? It's so weird. I know. I don't know why I would do that. Um, but I went to this restaurant and like literally my like three best friends were there having lunch. Oh. And Oh. Like I could tell they felt like really bad that like, you know, but I understand like I work, you know, they're not going to always know. be like, Hey, can you come out to lunch? Because I know you're working, you know? So yeah. like, but it's still like, I'm like, Oh, you know, that kind of sucks. But mm -hmm. I didn't even need social media to like happen upon my friends uh, yeah. at lunch, you know, but I love that. Like where you're discounting their experience when you're like, oh my gosh, like uh, I, I'm so glad I didn't have this or the other, like I get so, I don't know if it's called triggered or anything, but when people are like, um, they have, there's this like picture of like kids outside, like riding bikes and stuff. Like, I'm glad that this was my childhood instead of like this or whatever. And I'm like, but was it really? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I I went on my bike down to 7-Eleven, but then I went back and watched MTV. You know, the kids yeah. today are doing the same thing as we mentioned before, but they um, but you're minimizing their experience when you're like, oh, that must be the worst. And that's the that's the trick. That's the key is I think if we keep centering ourselves and our childhood in their life and their experience, we're missing it. We're yeah. missing what they have and we're not dealing with and talking to them. We're talking at them, comparing that. Like my parents did this to me, you know, we all like every generation does it. Like, well, when we were kids, we went and paid a nickel and da, 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 you know, and you're like, cool. My mom went to school uphill in the snow both yeah. ways in Southern California. I don't want to brag, um, but my dad was a student body president, valedictorian, um, prom king, and um, uh, head of the basketball team. Obviously. And I was like, I'm a failure. Yeah. I'm a failure. I'm a failure. And then I found out way too late that there were 11 kids in his graduating class. <laughs> I had over a thousand in mine. I was like, hold the phone. I have been judging my <laughs> high school. You had 10 other people and half of them were like working full time in the small town you lived in. Like, are you <laughs> were like farming? 
<laughs> anyway, no, that's so, awesome. yeah, I know what that's like to be compared to your parents and you're like, yeah. oh, I should do more. But, yeah. but these phones, this, these apps, these social media things, they're in their lives. And if we tell them like, I'm so glad I didn't have it. We are immediately breaking the connection. We are mm -hmm. stopping listening. We aren't figuring out how to help them. We're just centering our life and what we thought was great. Only the positive things to your point. Yeah. And saying you don't have as lucky of uh, an experience. They have a great experience. Yeah. Help them be good at it. Help them like maximize it and, and grow in it instead of telling them that it's not good because it's real. It's mm -hmm. happening. Yeah. I love Crazy that. Crazy. Can you tell? Same. I like got really in <laughs> We're both real soapboxy about this. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, if we were wrong, it would be, uh, you know, harder to talk about. I'm just kidding. No, I do think there's a lot, there's a lot of good with, you know, having the conversation and deciding with your kid if it doesn't work for them. You know, I'm not ever suggesting that your kid should be on social media. That's not, that's not the goal here. Sure. I'm not saying your kid should be pay playing video games. That's not the goal. The goal is that what is it that they are going to be using or using, need to use or want to use or want to learn? And how do we help them feel safe and comfortable and confident in learning it in a safe place, in a place like I tell my kids, I want you to fail with me because yeah. I will let like, I'll forgive, I'll move on, not forgive, but you know, like yeah. it's a safe space to fail. And instead of failing on your own after you're 18 and you're by yourself and you don't know how to work it, pick it up and move on, like yeah. this is safe. So this is the work we're doing. Yeah. And Go ahead. No, that was it. And oh yeah. But it's like you always say about the, the car, like driving, like I can't just get a license. I need to practice driving beforehand. And like, this is one of your favorite examples, um, is just like the permitting basic, the, the permitting process is that what it, yeah. like of how to get a driver's license, the the same thing, kind of thing you need to do with social media. Yeah. You don't, you don't just give your kids keys to the car when they're 18 and say, good luck. Don't die. Even though for the last six years of their life, they were like, can I get in a car? And you're like, no, you're going to die. It's right. horrible. They're yeah. totally dangerous. Do you know how many people died on a, in a car last year? There's a yeah. lot, by the way, it's right. they're dangerous for sure. They're heavy machines, you know? And yet we're like, oh, this is important for you to learn because we live in a, a community and in a world where transportation is something you're going to have to figure out and get in a car. You know, even people who are living in New York city and don't have a license, they still have to learn how to get in a car and like <laughs> know the safety of being in a car. You know, there's still things you have to learn. You can't be like none of it. Yeah. And so what, what we do instead is we drive with them. We sit in the passenger seat. They get a permit first. They do 40, 60 hours of practice driving with us in the passenger seat before they're even able to go to the next step and the next phase. Yeah. And if something happens and they mess up, we take the keys and we get in the car and or in the driver's seat and then we drive for a while. And that's the learning process. So why would we do anything but that same thing with another really awesome, dangerous machine? that yeah. yes, it, it does a lot of damage and I can, we can bring up horrible, scary stories and make everyone totally afraid. Or we can say, there's also so many good things that have happened through this. There's so many opportunities that come through this. There's so many great things that you can see and learn and grow and do. So I'm going to sit with you and help you learn how to drive this and learn how to use this. I mean, that's, yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah. Absolutely. I just had to tell the whole analogy because we were referencing it. So. I love it. No, it's a perfect analogy. It's one of my favorite. Um, so I think we can probably leave that there. Um, is there anything else you wanted? To, I mean, we've been talking for an hour, so oh gosh, thank you have. so much for taking the time to chat with us, but anything else that we think that we missed that we want to like touch on before we wrap up? Um, I can't think of anything specifically other than just it's, it, it's so much better to just ask your kids what they want to do with it than to tell them what you've decided or what you've read. And, and I see this with my kids all the time. They'll always come up with interesting or even better ways than I would have come up with. If I say like, how would you like to remedy this? Or how do you want to fix this? Like ask them and listen to them instead of telling them what you know, ask them what they know. And it's amazing. The different, uh, 
opportunities and options and avenues that grow and that you can help them to become better at phones, but then you become better at phones too, just by listening to them and asking them instead of telling them. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. Well, thank you so much, Anna McFarlane. Um, you can follow her. Anna is the worst um, or kids are the worst, which is Let's also a super, but Let's just stop at those two accounts. Those two. She has several others, but those are the main ones you definitely want to check out. Um, Kids of the Worst is hilarious. Um, Obviously, just a super funny account where she kind of talks about how Kids of the Worst. (laughs) We love them. We've all been there. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you again. And we will see you guys next week. Thanks.